Hi, it's Linda. Today I'm making some pockets to go in the yellow journal, the open spine journal. I started thinking about making one for a letter that my grandmother had gotten a long time ago, 1955. And I found it in some of the things that uh, my mother had. And it's a letter from her Aunt Lala. So I thought I'd, I'd make, it's kind of an interesting little letter. She talks about her life out in Hereford, Texas. And I thought I'd make a pocket for that. And then I thought, well, I'll make some other pockets too. So I'm going to start with this pocket. It's just a little, um, it has a little window in it. And I made a card to go in there with a, a sticker on it. And the yellow roses on that sticker will show through the window. And I'm going to um, ink the edge of the pocket before I glue it down. If I can find my vintage photo. Hope you're having a good day. We got rain this morning. It was very exciting. We got, I got back just in time from our walk to not get fairly drenched. I, I, it was coming down pretty good for a while, which is very nice because we have had very little rain this summer. Everybody's yard just as dry as can be. And so it was really nice to have some rain. I'm going to put this here. I couldn't decide, so I just decided it's going here. Hopefully, I will like it here. Got to start somewhere. This this book doesn't have much in it already, so it needs some it needs some starting points. And I'm just putting this down with some Faber Tac. I'm not sponsored. Someone suggested the other day that I should be getting a kickback from them, but I said that there are lots of other people that use it and mention it more than I do. So, <laughs> anyway, that's all right. I don't need a kickback from Fabri-Tac. A little glue would be nice, though. If they wanted to send me some free glue, that would be great. I'm not going to hold my breath. I'm just going to give that a little um, push to the middle so there's a, a little wiggle room in there. And it looks like I don't have it straight. Maybe my pocket's not straight. Anyway. Extra glue that's seeping out. I'm going to wait just a minute before I put that card in there. And I'm probably going to want to put um, a taller card in behind this one, too, just to um, fill up some of the space up here. But right now, I don't know what I want what I want to do with that. So we will see later how that's going to go. Just slide that in there like that. Yes, I think it definitely needs another another card in there, something tall to fill up the space. But that I'll have to work on that. I may leave this here just to remind me that I want to do something and I might do something with that, put a window there. Uh, two windows on the same page may be too much though. So anyway, that's our first little pocket, little fun window. And I have um, this one. I cut this out with um, this Sizzix um, die for the, the roses. It goes like that, and you run it through the uh, embossing machine, and then it cuts out all of those holes, and they're all stuck in these little holes when you get it done. So you have to take your little um, little pokey tool, and it has has holes in it that you poke through and, and punch out all the things that are left in your die. That's the only drawback to that. Is I guess you could say it's meditative to punch those out of there, but... Anyway, I'm going to put this on as a, a side pocket, and I'm, I'm still uncertain. Maybe I should put it where it would be open at the top. 
put it a little lower and I can have something in there that would stick up that way too. Oh, so indecisive today. Goodness gracious. Maybe I'll decorate this while I'm thinking about that. I'm gonna put this yellow rose stamp on the other side. It's just white on the back. So I'm gonna put that on there to give it a little something special. This is um, Wendy Veggie, I think is what her name is. It's called Make Art Blendable Dye Ink. It's yellow. It's, um, I don't know, I haven't had real good success stamping with it, but we'll see how this goes. Seems like maybe it's a stamp that doesn't get inked enough or something, but it's, it's not real dark, so it doesn't show up the best. But we'll see. And do I want it there? I could put it up there. I could put it here. Let's see how this does. These, um, oh, that did pretty well that time. These acrylic stamps get stained with um, ink colors. It doesn't hurt the stamp, but it ends up looking kind of funky. Okay, that's on there. And let's see, what else do I want to put on there? I think for now, I'll just tie a ribbon in it. And maybe a little bit of this baby rick rack just on the top of it and let that be it for right now and I'll come back to it later. I've been fiddling with this stuff all afternoon and I don't feel very creative to be honest. I don't know what my deal is. Same length. And here, oh, there it is. Keep it from coming unraveled, unspun on a spool. I don't know, maybe that needs one, one more thing in there. Put some of this cotton yarn in there. I hope I didn't cut those things too short. It's better to cut them longer and then, then um, adjust them after you have it in there, but I didn't do that this time, so we'll see. Yeah, this may be not so great. I just make the loop through there, through that hole, and then put the ends through it. And pull it down. I'm just gonna snip those off to lengthen the others and trim that little end on that that looks kind of ragged. Get that all the way snipped. Okay. Now, it's decision time. Do I want that three sides, I mean two sides or three sides? Stick up the top. Or it has to, I think I'm just gonna do these two sides and then I can have something longer in there if I want to. And I'm gonna glue it a little, little closer to the bottom of the page that way. So, we'll just do this. What I did is I took a piece of that very bright, bright paper that I used on this piece, the little pocket folder thing that goes in here. It was left over from that. And I uh, glued it to the back of this page so that the, the yellow shows through the die cuts. And, um, but it's not a pocket there. Okay, let me get back to where I was so I don't forget what I'm doing. Let's see if I can get this glue on here straightish. Just to keep it from 
oozing out too much. Okay, I think I'm gonna put that about right like that. put a word on the front of that if I, if I wanted to do that. The only thing is this paper is very, um, it has a texture and it's very soft. It's almost like handmade paper or something. And I don't know how that stamp would work on there. So I may just do something with that later. Right now I'll just put it in this pocket like that. And I could put something else in there too. Maybe a folded up piece of paper to, to write on or something like that. Okay, so we've got two. Um, this is lace I'm gonna put back there, but I think we'll go on to Aunt Lala's letter because that's the reason, the whole reason for the video. So I'm gonna put her, her uh, pocket on this page. And this is her letter. And this is a five cent, say five cents on any size Joy um, dishwashing liquid. And I think it's probably from the 60s. It's got punches in it like IBM cards. In fact, it says IBM right there. But it's punched so that it can be run through a computer. So it's very old. And I just thought it was kind of cool. It says Joy there. And I put the butterfly on a little bit of um, cheesecloth on it. But this is the pocket I did. It's a side, side tuck pocket. What I did is I took an envelope. It has this sloping shape that is narrow in the center. So that's what I used and collaged over it with some music page and some book page and dictionary page and old wallpaper. That's some of uh, John's mom's old wallpaper. I'm not sure that I've shown that one before. I don't know if I still have it down here handy or not. This is a small piece of it and uh, I thought that with the gold on it and the green, it would be pretty on this. So I used a little bit on this, not too much, just there and there. I, I put the collage on there and then I put this little bird on here. I fussy cut him out of a, a bird book that I got from Thrift Books actually for the, to, to um, use for that, cut birds out of. It's a used book. And yes, it hurts me every time I cut them out, but I keep thinking I bought this for this purpose. And I do have another bird book that was mother's, so it's not like I don't have a bird book to look them up. So I'm gonna put that right there. I don't think I need to do anything else to that right now. So I'll just glue it down. I'm very slow with, see it's got the, the um, what do they call that, security paper on the back. What I was gonna say is I'm very slow at collaging. I am very uncertain about what I'm doing. And I know what they say is, you know, just don't think too much about it or all those things. But anyway, that's why I didn't do it on camera. It took me quite a while to work my way through that. But I had fun. It was good. Maybe I'll get better at it. I watched a video after I'd done it. Uh, Rachel from Roxy Creation was talking about her best tips about doing collage, and one of them was to um, use large pieces of paper when you first start. And the other, another tip that she mentioned was to, if you're stumped, just get, put down a, a piece of old book page. Of course, she, she lives in Italy, and she has all these old book pages and documents that she buys at antique markets there. My old book page is not quite like hers. But anyway, that's beside the point. So this is the letter from uh, Aunt Lala. She was my grandmother's aunt. Her husband, Wirt, was um, her mother's half-brother. So they lived, um, I have the map here. I'll just show you where it is. This piece of Texas goes up here on this top, but this is um, Amarillo right here, and this is Hereford. That's where they lived. And then my grandmother's mother lived at Dimmit. So they were not too far away from each other there. I, I have no idea what the 
Um, that looks like an inch. It's 40 miles, so maybe less than 40, well, maybe 20 miles apart. But I don't know how often they visited each other. Hopefully they did. And I don't know why they all moved to West Texas. Everybody lived in East Texas for a while, and then they decided to move to Grayson County, and then they moved west after that, so not everybody. My family stayed here. But this is Aunt Lala's letter, and I think her handwriting is interesting. July 6th, 1955. Dear Maggie, it was sweet of you to write us, and I assure you it was very much appreciated. Felt as though we had had, had a nice visit with you. Frankie and Homer, that was my, um, Homer was my grandmother's brother. Frankie and Homer comes to see us once in a while, a great while, and Frankie writes to us too. Is the only one, is the only way we hear of Ruth and her family. Anyway, she goes on to talk about Uncle Wirt and putting up some hammocks in her, what she called her gallery. I'm assu assuming that was like a um, dog trot house with the open hall in the middle. So anyway, I may uh, put a picture of this at the end if you'd like to, to read it, if you can. It's, it's not the easiest handwriting to read. So I'm gonna put it in the, the pocket and put this five cent coupon in here with it, I think. I don't know why, it doesn't really go with that, but anyway. So I'm a, I may find some other things. I'd really like to have a picture of her and I don't know if, they, that I, if I have any. But I think that would be neat to put that in there. And if I do, I'll, I'll put that in. So, and the last page that I wanted to do, I want to do a flip up with this lace on this yellow page with this, um, this picture, uh, this painting by Monet. It's called Boat at Giverny. Giverny. I don't know how you say that. I'm not, not very good with the French. But um, I may glue this in as a, pocket that loads from the bottom so I, something could just be slid up under there. And I think I'm going to go ahead and glue this down first and then I'll put the lace on. This is a calendar page from when I worked at uh, my job in the corporate world from very long ago. Whoops, it got kind of wide there. Squeeze this and spread it a little bit. Okay. I think I'll put it down just a little bit from here. if I have that straight or not. I'm not even sure I got it cut straight. I just cut it out of the, out of the calendar. Get the glue there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this lace over that. Um, let's see which way this goes. I think that's the right side. And that one right there looks right side up to me, so it's going that way. And I don't know if I have it long enough to have a little bit at the top or not. Maybe I'll leave a little bit at the top. And then I'm gonna cut this off. And do I want some sticking out the side? Just a little bit, I think I do. I think I'll glue it down and then do that. I'm just gonna run the, light, the glue along the, the edge of the paper here. And I'm planning to come back and um, put some brads in it to hold it down and just give it a little extra fancy look. Up 
that sticks. But it doesn't have to stick too good because it's going to have the, uh, the brads in there. Okay, I think I'll use about that much. It's sort of straight. May not be. No, it's got a little bow in it right there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. All right, now I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to punch the holes from the other side of this page. Okay, I'm just going to not poke my fingers, right? <laughs> we'll see. Let's see about how wide that is. That's about five and a half, so that would be two and three quarters-ish. Maybe there. that. Okay, I think I'm going to go up just a tiny bit above that. Okay. And about there. I know you're waiting for me to poke my finger. Hopefully I'm not going to do it for you. I would holler. <laughs> okay. I'm going to poke it back through the other way. Open it up a little bit. Okay, where is that one? Is it way over here in the corner? Yep. I just almost poked my finger in. Okay, there. That's sort of kind of good. I'm going to use these um, gold breads. They're just office supply breads. I have these tiny ones, but I think they're so small that they they might just go through the hole or go through the, the lace. So I'm going to see how these look. Hopefully I got them spaced pretty good. Somebody else I had seen recently had done the breads to hold on a lace pocket, which I thought was really a clever idea. I don't know if she glued on any of her fabric down or not with that. Actually, it wasn't a lace pocket. It was a fabric pocket. Okay. I'm just going to turn this over and flatten them out. And I probably will put something across the top of this page to cover, cover up the uh, hardware part of that. Okay, come on. Fiddly, fiddly. There. Put this side and press it down a little bit. Okay, there we go. Alright. Well, I don't know what I think of that, but it is what it is. It might be prettier to put something behind that, like strip of ribbon or something across there. I can't tell if they're, no, they're fairly straight in line, hopefully. Anyway, there it is, and um, this will be a little pocket that I can slide something up in there. I'll pretend this is something I would slide up in there, just like that. And that could be writing space there as well. So, um, I think that's everything I have today. We'll go back and, and look at what we've done. And then we have Aunt Lola's, Aunt Lala's letter and a five cent off coupon for the butterfly. And those are, um, I paint watercolor those roses on there. I think I'm gonna stamp always right there on that. I might even put love always. I have stamps for that. 
These are just from this little barrel of stamps that came from Hobby Lobby. Stampabilities is the brand on them. And uh, let's see, what color do I want to make this? I'm going to use Ground Espresso. That'll be dark. Distress Oxide ink. I hope I like this. Let's see how that stamps. That's pretty good. Could have gone a little higher with that, but I didn't. Yeah, it does. Okay, good. And I don't know how it's going to stamp on this textured paper. Oh. <laughs> Kind of running off the edge there. It's hard because it's catty corner on there, but anyway. Love always, Aunt Lala. I never met her, but I'm sure she was a neat person. So anyway, that is Aunt Lala's pocket. And then we have this um, window pocket. I made this pocket from some scrapbooking paper. I just had this little scrap of it left. And I folded the top edge, let me take the pockets of the tags out. I folded this edge down and glued it underneath there. And I cut this um, window in it using this zip, this um, Sizzix die cuts that cuts these shapes. And I used the smallest die for that. This, um, this die has kind of what ends up looking like a torn edge a little bit on, or a deckle edge, I guess you might say, on the edge. I put tracing paper behind the, the window, glue, just glued it down around there, and then I stitched it with the gold thread around the window and across the top. I, I ran three rows across the top, mainly because I messed up <laughs> and I was trying to hide my tracks, my donkey tracks, as Mother would have said. But what I was going to say is this pocket, the window, you could put, um, I used tracing paper, you could use vellum. Vellum's a little bit heavier and a little bit not quite as uh, transparent. I've heard a tea bag you could put there to fill in your window. And this one is a fresh one that I just took the tea leaves out of. Um, this one has was used, so it has a stain on it. So if you, if you had a picture, say, that you wanted to put behind there, this would give that a really old look by having the tea stain on it. Or you could, use, this is trace, This is a, a different kind of tracing paper. It's a little bit heavier than the other and a little bit older, I think. Um, you could use packaging. This was uh, something one of my embossing folders came in. Just kind of like what we used to call cellophane. I don't guess it's really cellophane anymore, but that would make a clear window. And this is, um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's netting. It has a little bit of a sparkle to it. But if you glued that behind, that would cover the window and it would show a little bit of, of the sparkle on there, which would be a pretty effect too. Or you could even use something like this um, lace that has a really open weave and position it where the flowers are mostly off the edges and this would show, say if you had a pretty bold design that would, that would show through there, you could use something like that, which would be fun. So there are a lot of options on what you can fill, fill your window in with. But as I said, I used tracing paper on that one with a card in it that has lace. And the back has um, the roses stamp on it, which I added a little color to because it wasn't a good stamp on that. I didn't get a good image on it. And I drew around this with one of these um, color in La Plume pins, they have a, a small, like a uh, extra fine tip and then a brush tip, and I use the extra fine to go around there. And I also did faux stitching around the edge of that. So that is the card, and that just goes in there, and the lace, I like the way the lace kind of comes over the edge of the pocket. And that's just a placeholder for another taller tag to go in there. And then this is um, a two-sided tuck space with a tag in there. 
that needs a little love. I'm, I may have to glue something on the front of that or something like that. Let's see. And then the lace flip up with the Monet painting from an old calendar. And it has a little hidden tuck spot. Over. This pocket I made with some scrapbooking paper. It was, I embellished it with a couple of butterfly stickers out of this this set. Uh, Stickabilities. It's a Hobby Lobby product. I, it had two sides, so you, you get quite a few butterflies on that. And I, of course, got it on either half price or 40% off, one or the other. I don't remember now. And then I made, um, did I say this was wallpaper? The uh, John's Mom's Yellow Roses wallpaper. I decided to put another rosebud on there. And then this sticker has the yellow rose on it. And I just put a piece of yellow ribbon there and some lace. And it has the stamp on the back of yellow roses. I like the way that this looks when you put this in and um, position it like that. It kind of looks like that whole thing is the pocket. It could almost be that this journaling card could be a secret writing place. And then I did this taller tag to go in in this pocket and I put um, a side pocket in in this I left this side open so I could put something in here and I just had some of these these stamped tickets that I put in there and I like for the numbers to show on that so I put it in kind of like that and I used the I think I mentioned this piece of paper I had it stuck in here as a marker I didn't want to have two windows, but I decided that this was more like a frame, and I put the music page behind there, and one of the butterfly stickers, and just a little bit of lace at the top. And also, this uh, I covered with coffee dyed paper, so that goes in there. And then, uh, another pocket that I worked on, I stamped Imagine on the side of this tag going up. And I may still put a yellow rose or something on there. I'm not sure. I have the yellow rose on the back. So maybe it, maybe it's just fine like it is with that. So I put that in there with the, uh, the ta I guess you call that a tassel or the topper showing above there. And on this um, lace covered pocket, I made a tag to go in that. And I put it where it would go in. Um, it has the ornament on the bottom. It, it's a little charm that says Dreamer. And I just put a piece of this lace on on the uh, pin with that charm. And I punched a hole here and put uh, hole reinforcements on it. And this sticker says Life is Lovely. And on the back, it's just playing with the paper. I might, if I find a French stamp similar to that, these are printed on this card. I might put a stamp on this side, but it doesn't really need it, I don't suppose. But anyway, that goes up in this pocket like that. And if you wanted to, if you uh, wanted secret places in your journal, you could just have a very short card that just barely sticks out or doesn't stick out at all in this um, pocket. And then lace goes over the top of it like that. So, okay, I think that's everything. Um, the other pocket is this one with Aunt Lala's letter in it. I don't know. It's kind of busy. But anyway, I'm practicing my collage techniques. So that's all I have with that. So that's it for today, and I appreciate you joining me. It wasn't really a craft along too much, but um, I spent most of the afternoon trying to figure out what I was going to do. So, um, it would have been a very long video if I had filmed it all. So anyway, it, I appreciate you watching. I'm glad you came by and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.